Um, he was 16. In his, and you can tell that he had spent a lot of time with that great big mind of his. Yeah. He had, in his mind, he has discipleship down in, I don't know, a couple thousand easy pieces or whatever. He was very, very, very powerful, very succinct, very committed. Yeah. Especially, you know, he, did you hear his voice would kind of come up when he said, you know, it never said go out and make converts. Right. Yep. Go and make disciples. So that's something we got to figure out how to do around here a better job of, ladies and gentlemen. Those that can should disciple. Those that have never been discipled need to be discipled. Amen. And we got to be ready. See, God will never bring new people into this church if we are not ready to take care of them in a manner that He approves of. Is that fair? Yep. yep. Okay. So um, I think uh, Dr. Mark said that he might be able to get us some um, discipleship um, um, materials. I'm certainly going that, to take that. That would be awesome uh, for each and every one of us, right? Uh, um, to to kind of study that and, and take a look at that. And, and we do have uh, Pastor Carlos and Pastor Heck here as well. And I know Pastor Carlos is deep into discipleship, but I also would love Pastor um, um, Heck to be hands on too. He's our, our senior pastor. So. Um, anyone else want to share anything? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really good that we have to, to train them and then learn and we have to baptize them just quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's what's uh, it's very important in baptism and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so that they can see the kingdom of God. Because if they are only converts to come here mm -hmm. and then after that they go and they didn't learn anything. But if they're going to come, we have to train them and learn, you know, with the work of God and then baptize it with the water and the, with the, with the um, power of the Holy Spirit. Wherever they are, they can also be a good disciple. It's like uh, a generation to a generation to their children, to their uh, grandchildren, to their neighbors, or to wherever they are, so they can minister. Yeah. You know, I was touched because there, there's a lot of uh, uh, us that can be disciples, or some of us that are disciples, but, you know, I, I think one aspect of it, you know, Brother Bobby probably knows this well enough because he, he, he's got a passion, a heart for worship, but, you know, uh, one of the pastors, the Pastor Bubu was just saying about um, 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 to be a worship warrior. Yeah. You know, we need to be discipled and to, uh, um, um, to become that worshiper. You know, not just an, an admirer on the side, we can admire God, yeah. you know, at a distance and, and still say that we believe in God, but, you know, it's a difference to become uh, so in sync and, and, and be one in the spirit to worship God. Yeah, worship. And then uh, I think the last speaker uh, was also talking about a, a worship warrior. Yeah, a prayer warrior. prayer warrior, right? Wow. <laughs> um, you know, it, it was... I think a lot of us can, can probably say, you know, uh, that small of a time, I know it's from 9 to 5 o'clock, yeah. I felt like I wanted more. Yeah, me too, it's like I didn't want to go home even um, more. <laughs> but now it's time to go to work, <laughs> right here, right? So, um, I was just thinking, man, uh, us that, that, that were able to be touched um, and were able to participate, and you guys, I know you guys weren't there, but, you know, I would just love that, that, that all of us here truly believe that God has called you for such a season as this. That, you know, even a simple thing, anybody who's discouraged because Pastor Carlos threw it out there, he said, why do I see Sunday after Sunday the same faces looking like they're sad or, or defeated or I say defeated, but in our church there, there's a lot of that. But you know what? Knowing what we know and believing the God that, that, that we serve, anybody who's discouraged should be, um, um, is no longer safe around us. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Because God gave us such an a encouraging spirit. I think uh, uh, there's a pastor, Donna, who was, was talking about, man, we, we are not Second Timothy uh, 1 7, that we don't have the, the, the spirit of fear. And she brought down what fear was, and then also, God has given us a spirit of power, meaning that we are under the power of the Spirit. Power of love and someone, yeah. Yes, and then we operate now in the Spirit of God through the love of God, so that now our mind is enhanced to think like.
my God. Amen. And I thought, wow. I was so encouraged. The Spirit just told me, hey, you know what? Go out there. You know, and then and, and I was asking, Lord, send us. Send us the, the disciples. And Lord, cause us to be that disciple. Mm -hmm. and, and lead us to those people that need to be discipled. We need you ladies in this church. There are some <coughs> profoundly sad and lonely ladies in this church. And we need you to step up and be, you know, to be with us or just, just to take the ladies' ministry to a whole new level. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Amen. Carlos said that there was another ministry that needs to be taken care of. We remember that from last night. So guess what, folks? We're going to have to roll up our sleeves and get our Holy Spirit on. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, when we truly, like the, the song says that I'm just enthralled with, you know, speak life. Toby, Toby, uh, Toby Max do something. Speak hope, speak love, speak life. Mm -hmm. When we get into that genre, if we get ourselves, you know, with the Holy Spirit, with Him, listening to Him, that's why it's so, so vitally important because the fruit of the Spirit is love. Mm -hmm. Period. End of report. Yeah. Let, the, the, let the Spirit flow mm -hmm. with love. Amen. Because if we can uh, control the Spirit and then, you know, the... <laughs> So, um, you know, I, I talked to pastor today, um, he happened to call me and ask, uh, man, I, I love this pastor, he's asking, are you guys okay? I'm like, man, no, are you okay? <laughs> man, we've been praying for you. He said uh, he was able to speak, uh, I already preached, and, and, you know, I love him because he, he just asked, like, how, is there anything I can do for you? I'm like, wow, you're all the way over there and you're worried about us or worried about, and I'm like, man, thank you. Um, so... I did uh, give him some praise report about how, you know, um, um, built up and how uh, um, all of us that, that were able to come, um, you know, just kind of got this uh, refreshing um, and anointing that, 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 that followed us. And, and you know, um, so I'm just hoping that maybe, you know, um, um, we'll have some, some, some more of these events or conference or, you know, at least as a group or as a church congregation, maybe we could throw some of these events yeah. um, and, and, you know, and, and do the teachings, you know. I think, uh, um, you know, some of that thing uh, about the, the campus being so far away, we need to kind of bring them a little bit closer. So we, we would have some rapport with them and, and, and you know. So, um, that, that was that. I just felt so blessed uh, being there and, and I thought, you know, it was just a very refreshing, refreshing conference. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I think it's really good, you know, like our church, if we have a visitor, we have somebody, a group that, you know, you can take to in one room and uh, you welcome them and ask probably what they can participate or they, they want to be a member of the church or what they want to become or whatever. So at least we will know what's their purpose, not only that they just come and go, like, because, you know, when, um, when I was before, when I was going to that church, you know, there are only five, but suddenly they grow up so fast. And then, you know, I found it out that, you know, I like that church because, see, when the first time that I come uh, in, mean, you know, and they will come as a new visitor. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, somebody will sit next to you. Yes. And then they'll go, uh, we have something for you. And then, you know, we, it's like, you know, they got to give you to the reception in the room and then they ask yes. you, how's yeah. your family? Yeah. How's your work? How's your thing? And then after that, so it's like a conversation. And after that, I think, you know, um, I have a word for you. Maybe you can uh, uh, read this one, this verse, and then that one. And then, you know, you go home, you read it. Then the word will manifest you. Because God loves you. And then, you know, I think, how she knows that, that? You know, in my mind, because, you know, it's like uh, I'm new to them. I don't know anybody. I mean, uh, you know, the word is talking to you, and then, you know, after that, 
you want to come back again? And then when you come back again, you know, the, uh, he told you, so how do you like our ministry? You want to be in the music ministry? You want to be in this ministry? You want to be in that ministry? Nice. So you can fit in. And then they have good people from worship ministry. They have people for, for this ministry and that one. And then you just choose which one you want. I think that's what happened with us the first time we came here. It's, um, Tito Mark and Tita Alma invited us because we are all yeah, from so good. They have And then they are all here and they, then they invited us here. Yeah, and then, you know, when Lynette already approaching me and said, Rosel, why don't you be in the Hawaii, yeah, Hawaii dancing? Yeah, yeah. dancing thing. I said, Fresh no, food. but I'm Fresh just food. going here just yeah. once a month. I said, so it's okay. And then they started to invite us to, and then suddenly they put us to the choir too. And then it happens instead of once a month we're coming yeah. because we're always going to Angelus. We go like two times and then we go three times and then now we're going every yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So that's the okay. technique right there. I think that's the, the one we're going to mm -hmm. do. Uh, yeah, do, we, do, do we need do we need to have a set schedule? You know, we yeah. have a schedule for who brings what food and what not on what we do we need to divide this up and, and, and agree upon some things, you know, be be taught some things and then so we touch some points. You know, you the the young lady you were sitting with on Sunday, Adri? Adrian. Adriana. 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 I love the conversation with her a couple times. She's very open. She does listen. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. There's an example of someone who needs yeah. to feel loved. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Loved and cared about. If if she feels, you know, she said she would like to bring other people here and whatnot. Yeah, praise, 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 praise God. Yeah, we may need to reinforce her with. Yeah. Men and women who speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's get our antenna up. All right, uh, let's start. Yeah. Let's pray first. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for another night, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that it's you yeah. that we will hear, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Show us, Lord God. Lord, open up our eyes so we may see with our spiritual eyes the very thing that you're revealing in today's subject, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord. The things are changing. Yes. There's a tide, Lord God, that's coming. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you that you've included each and every one of us, Lord God, to be your pieces, Lord God, that you will move and tell us when to move. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this season, Lord God, and, and, and the students' lives and, and the, 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 the church season, Lord God. It, it's just an awesome thing to witness, Lord God. And, and Lord, we can also declare such great move of God in this place. So we bless your name and honor you and we give you praises in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So um, Christian Ed. Wow. So you guys got your questions? I should have given it back to you guys. But a um, couple of things that kind of popped up. Uh, the question was in, 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 in number one in D. Jong's uh, philosophical ladder which is the first and the most fundamental rung which is the basis upon which all things rest. Um, that was found in page 26. The basis of authority is the Holy Scripture. The Word of God is the basis upon which all things, uh, all thinkings rest. So any type of um, educational aspect um, that we can learn from, even the secular, we have to base it on the Holy Scripture, the Word of God. Um, you know, this comes to mind where, you know, we talk about uh, um, the transformation of the mind, renewing the mind. So anything that, that we feed our mind as Christians, it has to go along with the Holy Scriptures. And, you know, um, the whole ladder, uh, it talks about the nature of the person, but the, the main thing, the main authority, the basis of authority in any educational uh, background that we might learn, secular, uh, um, um, biblical it has to coexist with the word of God and you know I, I love that because sometimes you know um, there are things that I know who, who still believes in, in um, let's say astronomy the science Science is. <laughs> yes. Libra, Cancer. Right? Right? Yeah. No, 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 no,
astrology, like like the the, the, the signs of a um, so um, some of these things that, 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 that we have to, to really think about some of the things that, that this world can offer as education. Some of them sounds really good. Some of them are, are kind of uplifting too. Um, and, and I think he talked about it in the book about putting the lens of the scripture that even some of the secular ways of studying, you know, um, um, they go through the metaphysic, the uh, epistemi, uh, epistemiology, uh, imperialism, anxiology, uh, um, I can't even pronounce it, ontology and, and, and cosmology. Man, there is such basis of, of, in studying those things when you put the lens of the scripture, we put the scriptural lens that we can study and see those things that there is something biblical about them. And there, then you could also see that there are not biblical things about them. So you could kind of discern some of the things that you study in this in the secular world that when you put the lens of the scripture, wow, you begin to think, no, no, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what the, my God says. And then you could kind of trace down uh, 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 some of these things that they talk about, yes, you know, just for example, we talk about um, um, metaphysics. Metaphysics, I wrote in my notes here. Okay, I'm just going to go over with you guys. I think that was... Metaphysics, it, it has to do... It inquires about the nature of the ultimate reality. Basically, it, it attempts to establish the content of our knowledge. The content of our knowledge, we, we can kind of think, wait a minute, the content of our knowledge... What is that about? Because it, it, if you fill in a lot of things that the metaphysics is, it talks about so many things that it does not attribute it to God. Mm -hmm. But now we can apply metaphysics in our life. The content of our knowledge, you could just say now it based, is based on scriptures. You could study metaphysics, but now you've got to put it in the context mm -hmm. of the scriptures. And it, it talks about, uh, you know, um, the branches of, of metaphysics, ontology, cosmology. Um, ontology is the branch of metaphysics that investigates reality. Well, when we start to dig in, let's say let's do ontology. When we start to dig in about the reality of, 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 of knowledge, man, uh, um, metaphys metaphysics will take you to different places. But if you... Do metaphysics in a way that this is Christian education. Metaphysics is, is a secular term, but metaphysics can be used in a biblical aspect. That when you start to learn about the knowledge, uh, uh, ultimate reality, or, or, or about our knowledge, man, we could always look back in the scriptures about knowledge. Now, if you want to do ontology and say, hey, I want to investigate about reality, well, where is the best place that we could find about the realness? of our God, reality of life in Christ. So in some ways, we can kind of term metaphysics kind of being as a, in an umbrella with a Christian education covenant. Not metaphysics in a secular term. Because also, um, it talks about it in, in, in epistemiology. It, it's the theory of knowing and knowledge. So it's related to teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. So if there's a theory about knowing and knowledge, you know, some, sometimes it, it takes you from different aspects. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, sometimes theory of knowing and knowledge, they take you, if you go to Hindu, they'll tell you about their knowledge and how to learn and how to achieve um, knowledge. Um, and they kind of put a lot of spin into about knowing and learning and teaching. But once again, we have to put the scriptural lens to see that even we put the lens of, of, of the scripture and look at all to these things and then and there's a chart here that says this is an, an understanding of what Christian education is because social sciences you know, uh, uh, can be seen in the eyes of God as relating back to the origins of the Bible. And I thought that's, that's pretty deep because sometimes I want to stay away from that. And I want to stay away from psychology. I want to stay away from some of the secular 
um, 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 how to works. But if we're founded in Christian education, the scriptures, the main basis of, 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 of authority that, 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 that is, is the scriptures, then we could go and now study psychology in the basis of who our God is. I know, you know, it's not a slippery slope if you have the lesson of scripture, but you know, sometimes, I guess some of the teachers, even, even the last teacher that I had was just saying, you know, it, it's somewhat a slippery slope when we start to tackle, but man, you have to be founded and know the scriptures and then try to attain some of the knowledge that they have gained. But you could also reflect that back to what scripture is. So there's something good in all those things that, that, that you know, it, those are all created by God, I believe. That we can attain knowledge and say, hey, we filter it with the scripture. It's like, hey, yes. Because some of the, the, the social sciences started to evolve in the 21st century. The 20th and the 25th, uh, 21st century. So the education that we're learning in social sciences it is being more advanced and more in, in, in tune to, 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 to today's society. But not all of them are correct. We need to filter it out now with the, um, um, with the Word of God. And then the second question was, um, state the seven hallmarks of Christian uh, epistemology cited by George Knight. You know, um, um, sometimes the reading feels like it's a little bit dry here, but uh, it'll get better. Um, it, it's found in page 28. Um, so he cited seven hallmarks of a Christian epistemology, which once again is the theory of knowing and knowledge. And it's related to teaching and learning. So the way the theory of teaching and learning based on Christian epidemiology is, it says in number one, biblical perspective is that all truth is God's truth. Wow, amen. All truth is God's truth. So in some ways, we can also find that there's truth in a secular um, 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 let's say epistemology and you would know that truth because you know that you have found that truth in the Bible okay. same thing let's say in psychology or different social sciences the truth of Christian revelation is true to what actually exists in the universe so wow can you imagine the revelation that God gives you through the scripture through hearing the word of God is true for all of the universe wow Wow, that is an awesome, awesome, you know, word there that I'm like, wow. That in all the universe, in all knowledge, that when God reveals to you through the scripture or hearing the word of scripture, that remains true and exists in all the universe. I thought, wow, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, what do you guys think of that? That's pretty deep. <laughs> you know, and, and we know the revelation of God, when He gives it to you, it stands eternal, right? That's what the Word of God says. Now, when you believe, He said, eternally you will be mine, saved, spending the rest of your eternity with me. So the revelation that He gives you while you're on this earth is also saying eternally. It stands and exists in all the universe eternally. I'm like, wow. And then number three, forces of evil seek to undermine the Bible, distort human reasoning, and lead individuals to rely on their own inadequate and fallen selves in the pursuit of truth. Wow, enemy <laughs> seeks to undermine the Bible. Well, yeah, it's so true. Isn't that why we need, I think you guys are, 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 are with Pastor Carlos about Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That we can Yep. Yeah. That we are so inadequate, that we are so fallen, that we try to pursue truth in that aspect. Good luck. I don't believe in luck, but I'm just saying that in a in a way that man, there is no way that you will find truth in your inadequate and fallen selves. That yes, 
We need a Savior. We need the Holy Spirit of God to teach us this truth. But we need to know that there is an enemy that will try to undermine you and tell us that, you know what? Scripture is not true. Don't buy it. Don't believe it. But this is where the Spirit of truth comes in. He will tell you all truth. He'll remind you of, of, of what Jesus said in, in His Word. He'll bring it to your remembrance. So, what do you have to like the, If there's any peace in the, in the philosopher, philosopher's mind or, or being, you know? Are they like... It seems like they're always in a search for truth. Yeah. It seems like they're probably not content. They're like searching, 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 fighting God. You know, versus someone that's given themselves to the Lord. Amen. To find that peace. Right. Because they're going to keep fighting to prove their, their, their biggest obstacle is God. <laughs> Trying to prove that He does not exist, that He ain't true. It's funny because, yeah, somebody who has not found God will continue to fight to find the truth, to find something, to find. And it's an ever, never ending um, 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 fight to, or struggle to, to keep searching, keep looking. But just like you said, when you start to surrender yourself to God uh, through Christ Jesus, it's like, man, you just find such peace that you're like, wow. You know, as, as, as I found truth, it's like almost like the end of my search. But now he, he gives you this renewed mind uh, by the power of the Spirit. That man, the truth just gets so much bigger because it gets revealed. Just like that revelation that exists throughout the universe, it's so big that, you know what, sometimes, man, I don't know if the universe can contain that knowledge because God is so big of a, a knowledge that He wanted to impress upon us. I'm sure we can never handle all that. <laughs> but God has given us enough that we can, you know, um, um, just at least know that the undermining presence of the the enemy cannot wash away, cannot um, 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 kind of uh, um, blot out the truth. He will try, but number four, we only have relative grasp of the absolute truth in the universe. But yeah, that, that's what I was kind of getting into. You know, we don't have all of it. It's not absolute. Only God. Only God. So that's that's one of the truth that that George Knight wanted to um, um, talk about, you know, um, and, and, and knowing and teaching and learning, uh, basically, some of these are really fundamentals that we need to really understand. The Bible is not concerned about abstract truth. It always sees truth as related to life. Therefore, knowing in the biblical sense is applying perceived knowledge to one's daily life and experience. Wow. So, FST, Demiology is about knowing and um, learning and, and, and teaching. So, when you start to know biblical truth, it just talks about, man, now what? This perceived truth that we receive, what do we do with it? And he said that this knowledge has to now be applied on a daily basis throughout our life experiences. And I think Brother David was just talking about that, um, yeah, um, last time that he preached, man. You know, um, we know the things that we ought to do, but sometimes, hey, it's so hard. But that's, that's, that's where the power of the Spirit comes in. Um, number six, the various sources of knowledge available to the Christian. Um, the special revelation of Scripture and the person of Jesus Christ, the general revelation of natural world and reason, are complementary and should be used in the light of the biblical pattern. See, this is somewhat, I don't know if a lot of our, some of the pastors might disagree with this, but the various sources of knowledge available to Christians, so there's a lot of knowledge available to us, right? And then it lists special revelation from the Scripture. Yeah, we know that. God will reveal through the scripture. When we read it, when we hear it, God will just reveal to us his message uh, and the person of Jesus Christ. So once we know who Jesus Christ is, we read it and accept him as Lord and Savior. And then we get this renewed mind. We start reading the Spirit of God just now. tells us who he is and reveals to us. And then this is where kind of some pastors might not agree, but there are general revelation of the natural world. What do you guys think that is? General revelation of the natural world. 
as, as, the, as the ball said, that the, in the natural world, God, God reveals himself from the beginning. You know, like, the, as man has no excuse because God has been revealing himself his, since the creation in the natural world. <laughs> so there's this creation. Yeah, there's a cre creation. created world, yeah. which is this natural world. And, and you know what? Um, um, I guess sometimes it, it, it says natural, but maybe revelation of the secular world. Is that something that we can right. turn to? Is natural, secular? That there's something that God can also reveal through the secular world that we can learn from. <coughs> and, um, you know, but then again, like I said, you have to put the lens of the scripture to know which the, which of these revelations are true and which are not. Um, and then also reasons. Remember, man, reason. Who wants to go by the reasons, right? <laughs> but there are some reasonings that does not quote biblical verses but are founded in biblical philosophies. That in this secular world. Secular world. So um, I, I guess, I guess what, what the author is just trying to say, hey, you know what, all of these are open for us to learn as Christians. And we could go into the secular, we could go into the natural world with the lens of the scripture, start to filter in what these biblical truths and revelation that even the natural, the secular world can, 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 can reveal to us. Because any revelation or any encounter with God, which I believe are revelations, enhances us, grows our faith. So, you know, it's almost like, man, we, we can start walking into the secular and just have the mind of Christ to see with the eyes of the scripture, and now come in and say, hey, wow, I can come into something secular and have revelation from it, because I have now the mind of Christ to see with the lens of the scripture. So, I thought that was quite amazing. You know, I think of creation and the uh, knowledge is there to wow us and give God the glory, you know. Just to like look into it. And yes. Take you back to God and say like, wow, Lord. Wow, you know, Lord. Yes. Take an eye apart. You study it as a scientist. You take it apart how it works, and you're like, how did this happen? You know. Yep. And it should take you to God. So. Amen. Yeah, that's that's like Amen. Uh, the science of you know now that we have the for example the Hubble and the yeah. all that we can see the deepest or the there. universe yeah. and like we can see wow God created this universe is so. You know, we can, with those images, we can see the wonders of this, how God created, really. That they say is millions and millions of light years, and, and still they haven't found the, the end of the universe. So it's, it's like, a, that blows your mind, you know, how God really created the universe. It's amazing. And you begin to marvel, right? Yeah. You begin you become to be amazed, and, 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 and you know, you, feel like, wow, what a wonderful world that we live in, because guess what? We have a wonderful God that created it. And, and some of those things that I think we revealed in the natural aspect of it, just like, you know, some of the things that we're talking about, um, you know, it, it's amazing. Because sometimes, you know, if we, we didn't read about this, we didn't know about this, we weren't taught about this, it's almost like sometimes, hey, I don't want to stay in the secular, I don't want to go in the secular, I don't want to be in the natural world. I, but sometimes, you know what? We're here. We live in this world. We live in this world. Yeah, I love this world, but we live in it. So there are things that God reveals to us, from the secular to the natural, natural, and, 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 and even in reasoning. Yeah. Man's reasoning. So there's a lot of uh, scientists that are Christian, yes. but they're pushed away from the other society, you know, Christian, I mean, uh, scientist society that don't accept them because right. of their beliefs in God. But I mean, doing the same thing, it's just that one, you know, stays away from God and the other one serves God. Yeah. And, and so, you know, there's, the thing, there's the thing that, that they teach children. I, last night I had a conversation with my stepson <laughs> about, you know, that we came from monkeys, from apes. 
So we had that. <laughs> because that's what they, they teach them in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if you don't really know the Bible, then... then Because it, it is, if you type it in the computer, it's in like Wikipedia. And, and, and it tells you yeah. that we came from apes. Because uh, Charles Darwin, right? He just yeah. read that. Yeah. Yeah. The evolution. 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 Yeah. 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 The origins of species, you know, we can, yeah. Yeah, but that's what impacts us, because that's what we're studying right now, Christian education, because the foundation is biblical, mm. and now it's totally around. Around. Now yeah. it's monkeys, you know, not right. God, <laughs> but now we're, we're, we're from the monkey, you know, it's... It's everywhere we get, it's in the world. Education. That's why I It's a monkey. If you want to have some fun sometime, uh, uh, we'll having a conversation with an atheist, just reach over and put a nice gentle hand on his shoulder and say, Wow, I'm listening to you. You must be a man of great faith. <laughs> and they, and they, they start to do this number. I thought this one guy was going to pitch over on his head. And I said, For you, for anyone to believe in the Big Bang Theory, I said, You've got to have a lot of faith. And I turned on my heels and walked off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's also, it's also, you know, in the atheists, I think uh, one of the, the, the pastors was saying, uh, they were saying that, you know, man, these, these, these atheists, man, they, they keep wanting to disprove that God does not exist, that they have such passion, that they believe that God exists, but they're wanting to disprove that He does not exist. So, they're trying to be this faith that there is a God that they don't want to um, um, uh, accept, but now we were just going to discredit them and make everybody else believe, but... In the back of their mind, they're, they're probably thinking, man, there is a God that we just don't accept and we just want to make, you know, we want to disbelieve and, and, and cause people to, to not believe in God. But in actuality, you think, man, somebody who's trying to discredit and, and disprove something doesn't, doesn't exist. Why fight it? <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, they, there's got to be, they got such yeah. passion to, to discredit or, or make us unbelieve that there's a God that exists. If you're doing so much that it takes that much of their energy and their time and their life, that man, yeah, I'm thinking subconsciously that they do believe in God. Yeah. Because of that much effort and that much time and, and to, to make themselves disbelieve it. Because you have to have a presence of knowing that there is a God before you can even discredit that there is no God. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I'm yeah. like, wow, you got something. I think some the problem is that some of the, some the biggest <laughs> Christian minds today are, are yeah. atheists that set out to prove yeah. that the Bible is yeah. incorrect and that, that there is no God, and guess what? Yeah. They fell right into the trap. <laughs> I mean, if you push it far enough, it says in his word that he, that he put a place in everybody mm -hmm. for himself. Yeah, you know? Can I tell you, oh, you set your mind in the wrong way. Well, God has set already my life for him. <laughs> so, we're, you know, I was just going to say, you know, Charles Darwin, the origins of species, man, he's got um, um, man, quite a bit of, a, of, of, of um, impact. And then, you know, John, John Dewey, you know, talks about it, uh, he talks about democracy, experimentalism, and then Dewey viewed the school as a miniature community of embryonic society. Basically, he's a naturalist. Uh, um, um, he believes that, 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 actually, you know, his mom was a Christian, and he talks about it, and then uh, he talks about it, uh, there, he had a biography, somebody wrote it, and I kind of looked at it briefly. The John Dewey, um, what was it? Twenty-nine. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, John Dewey's mother was a committed Christian. Yeah. Wow. Was it twenty-nine? Yeah. John Dewey's mother time. was a committed Christian who probably pushed her son too too intensely about becoming a follower of Christ, and then he he even led a. A, um, a ministry for the youth, so forth and so on, and then, um, and then he, you know, he, he, I don't know, man, I'm, I just learned from that, I'm like, man, Lord, <laughs> cause me not to push my kids, uh, you know, God, you're in charge of them, you know, I'm just going to be here, I'm just going to hug these kids, I'm just going to embrace them, I'm, I'm going to let them be kids, run along, yeah. but when it's time to sit down uh, in the table, let's pray. 
Let's thank God. Let's praise God. And maybe once in a while I'll throw some scriptures to be remembered. But I'm hoping that I, I don't get to push my kids intensely. Um, but yeah, I'm just believing though. Um, and then it says here, to understand Dewey is to comprehend the way of naturalis uh, naturalism in which there is no place for God or supernaturalism. That, that's the one that I was looking for. So if you understand Dewey, who was raised from a Christian family, looks like uh, he grew up as a Christian. Uh, but I don't think he had that relational um, aspect uh, with, 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 with Jesus. And yet all of a sudden he grew up and he said to understand Dewey is to comprehend um, that he is a naturalism naturalism in which there is no place for God or supernaturalism. So I thought, wow. Yeah. And then he talks about the metaphysics in, in the eyes of the scriptures um, and also epistemology. And I'm sorry, I'm not. And then they, he talks about a lot of those. But question number three, what was the outcome of Horace Mann's preference for natural religion over revealed theology? Um, I believe the answer is on 31. Horace Mann, with his preference for natural religion over uh, revealed theology, Mann slowly removed Christian, Christianity <coughs> to the public school. Now understand, I was looking at what is natural religion? Well, it's religion based on reason rather than divine revelation. So, whose reasoning are we following in natural religion? Well, it's man. Yeah. It's a man-made religion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm still a, a leader. <laughs> so, <laughs> his preference, his preference is natural religion. Self-religion. Self Self-reasoning. And how awesome is it that this guy got put in a high place, was in a, in a publishing company that wrote journals, and then I think he got put in a... a um, but, but, but he was so influential da, 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 in, in the public school that he started to move in a way that he thought was for God. I think that that's what the book said. He was moving in a religious fashion that he thought that he was doing right. And I thought, wow. It's kind of like scripture is, where it says, you know, at the last days, people will follow their itchy ears. You know, they're going to go to what they want to hear. So it's yeah. kind of like what they have right there. Yeah. It sounds good to me, then. Sounds good. You're the man. So, he, he started to apply it, and guess what happened? It just says that in this word. Today's society, the public school, the Bibles, the prayers have been moved out because there was a man uh, that they kind of started to. They contended. They started contending. Yeah, they started, yeah, but there's a movement that, 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 yeah. that, that started this. Yeah, that's why. Mm -hmm. And it's taken out. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's the problem, that's human knowledge. That's where it, takes, it has taken us to where we're at. Yeah. See, uh, this here, uh, going back in 29, it says about Dewey's. Dewey's pragmatic position leaves no room for absolute truth because his concept of truth was extremely relativ relativistic. Yeah. So, relativistic, no, yeah. no, no absolute truth means no. Yeah. No word of God, no, no word of God, God. Yeah. whatever is convenient, whatever is good, that, that's the truth for, for them. <laughs> for that day, yeah. For that day, yeah. For that day, yeah. Very short, yeah. Very short term. It says that I, I, I think, um, so that, that, that was the, the, the advancement uh, that, that he did actually. <laughs> he, he started to remove personality yeah. from the that's process. Kind of, so why? Oh God. It, it's like you're always questioning, right? Because there's no absolute truth. Yeah. Exactly, so you never find the it actually is one of these. Yeah. Hey. There you go. Uh, is this really the, what the, it the, is? The proverbial disaster. That's how they are broken. Uh, wow. <laughs> Romans like my wife. <laughs> Romans 121 says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or gave thanks, but they became futile in their speculation, wow. and their foolish heart was darkened. Wow. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Ah, yes. So that's where we're at. That's what I was, I was about to read. 
See, he said, however, this is not now a for, uh, forest man. However, he was of the opinion that his vision was religious, even though, in essence, it opposed Christian, the Christian uh, uh, belief religion. So, he, he thought that he was doing something good. And, um, you know, it's foolish. Yeah, he was sincere, but he was sincerely He's wrong. Sincere. Thank you, yes. You know, Wait for the donkey. Brother, brother Paul. <laughs> to talk to you. Brother Paul's trying to have the same way. <laughs> yeah. thought that he was doing yeah, 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 for yeah. God. Right. But, but this is a religious without God. This he was without, without God. God. Without power. That's what it is. It's is a religion of, of the reason. Of the, yeah, of, yeah. you know, it, it brings reasoning in the place of God. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. what man, the man thought is God. You know, not, not, yeah. not God, but is. It elevates human reasoning to, to the place of God. Hmm. That's, that's where we are. That's sad. Yeah. Uh. Anyways, I think that, that we can answer the which concept did John do we advance um, <laughs> pertaining to the school, school, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And that was in uh, um, 20, 20, 31. Um, do we advance the concept that the school is a central agency for making sense out of life for the young. Um, uh, uh, it's a sad concept. Um, wow. Yeah. Making sense out of life. And, and, and who, who applies the education that Dewey um, tries to place into the young adult or the young life? It, you know, it's all again. His belief, yeah. His um, 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 uh, former reasoning, and, and, and that's why. Remember the, the the absolute basis of authority is the Holy Scripture. The Word of God is. A, is how do you say? Yeah, in, in Christian education, right? Um, so we kind of see that 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 man. When we turn on our own reasoning. Our own belief, man. There, there's so many things you can trace it. it it's just a good hi historical overview. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and it all caters to, of course, the flesh because word of God are spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. All those things that, that that's why it caters to a lot of people that are because not they don't have the spirit of God to discern. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Wow. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really, that's really true. <laughs> like, so I, I heard so say somebody about the Nazis. Nazis. The Nazis were very intelligent, very yeah. educated, yeah. but they did, they, but they, but they were, they didn't have God. They, they were. They can't understand. They, 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 could, they created. I mean, they were monsters. You know. I mean, mm -hmm. that it's like you create. I said they created educated barbarians. In other words. You create, uh, yeah, very bright, but what morals, what values are in there? No, there's no, no fear of God, no, nothing. So no. imagine that, what they yeah, can imagine. Uh, like, uh, it's like a waste. Yeah. No fear of God. Yeah, bright mind without the fear of God. <laughs> it's destruction. Yeah. Then um, he talks about the, the different philosophies here, and I know it's quite a bit. Some of these, uh, to like reread over and over, but um, there is some like analytic philosophy. It talks about the desire to clarify the language and method used to communicate ideas. Um, and there's some that are postmodernism, modernism. Um, so I know I know you guys probably read that. And, and sometimes you know I, I don't understand all of it, but where this theology fits in, and and that that was a almost a summary of all of this. Uh, it says, Christian education must avoid teaching Bible theology as ends in themselves, reducing them to purely cognitive constructs. Remember, some of the knowledge that we need to have, yes, it has cognitive implication because the knowledge that we learn from the Word of God hopefully is renewing our mind on a daily basis as much as if we're reading the Word of God every day, that there's a new renewing. That the, the Word of God starts to really just uh, cleanse and, and, and go through us, our minds. So it's not just a co uh, cognitive constructs, meaning that it's not just something that, that 
gets placed and, and we're like robots where we, we now work through. Meaning it's something that changes in us. It's meaning it's not just head knowledge. It's not just head knowledge. It causes us to move in a way that now is, is, is based on the revelation of God, the word of God, the will of God. Um, rather, studies must be designed to, this, to that student learn to think in biblical ways using theology as guide to categories of thinking. So, um, theology is the study of God. Theology rather than education, the educational philosophies must control Christian education. This leads us to the transformational aim in Christian education that is actualized most naturally within the context of community. Both the Old and New Testaments put particularly stress on the interactive, interpersonal aspect that provide teaching, learning situations that transform our beliefs, attitude, values, and behavior or pattern. That was in yes. page 33, last paragraph, going on to 34. So, theology, Christian education, it says that it's meant to be interactive, interpersonal. And it talks about Old and the New Testament. And it teaches and it causes us to learn situations that transform, remember, the renewing, transform our beliefs, our thoughts, what we perceive, our attitudes, the way we act, the way we move, the way we talk, uh, our values, our morals, needs to conform now to phil uh, philosophies or morals of the, the, the Bible, our, our behavioral patterns, our, our, our habits. It actually moves your character. Molds you. Yes. It does. If you allow it. To. If you allow it. So this is what Christian education is in theology. It should be interpersonal, interactive, mm -hmm. and it teaches us and it causes us to learn that we may be transforming our beliefs, attitudes, values, and behavioral patterns. Yeah. yeah. That that's awesome for me. I'm like, wow, thank you, God. think only that we are only because we are Christian, we're the only one is the best, we're the only one is perfect, so we are very judging other people instead of bringing people to Christ. You're throwing away people. Yes. yes. That's, That's why we have we have to do that in our minds and in our mm -hmm. um before we end anybody wanna add anything? I know I'm, uh, we're gonna start chapel on time, so you will be leaving on time. Um, are you guys being blessed by reading? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, being blessed like reading it over and over. We, we learn more, we uh, expand mm -hmm. more, the bigger picture yeah. of Christian education. I kind of like it when we interact like this. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, anybody need. Um, Copies for chapter three because I, I printed some. So anybody does not have any book, uh, a book yet mm -hmm. or want a copy? Okay. Yeah.